about 80% of world's plants, they depend on cross-pollination. And more importantly, about 75% of the food crops that we grow depend on cross-pollination. So think of a world where there is no cross-pollination taking place, so our own food security would be at risk. So that's a real concern. So honeybees are, I think, important to humans because uh, they provide us with honey and they also provide us with wax. And uh, both of those were extremely important products uh, before we had other sources of sweeteners or, or waxes. And then of course, the pollination services that they provide are, are very important. One of the interesting things about honeybees is the social structure of the colony and they have uh, lots of amazing behaviors that they use where the individual bees within the colony work together to make the colony uh, function somewhat like an organism and people oftentimes term this a super organism. How beautiful and uh, how amazing these honeybees are. These animals are interesting in itself and that they are actually amazing. And honeybees can be used in experiments and, and they are the ones that are telling us how smart and intelligent um, insects are. If you look at the uh, scientific literature, then about 95 to 97 percent of all the scientific literature is about Apis mellifera, and only three to five percent are uh, studies on these Asian honeybees. Although these Asian honeybees are very important for pollination, in my opinion, what is more important is to study the biology um, of these Asian honeybees to see, um, for example, we don't know anything about their life cycle. So we need to understand the biology to come up with strategies for conservation. So the first thing is to count, to understand whether we have a decline, whether the decline is nationwide, or whether there are specific areas. And what we have to start is long-term monitoring studies. In our study where we observed um, the number of colonies at this Batia city this year was half of that the year before. But how to say, this is not saying anything about a decline. So you have to measure over several years and then determine what is the average over years. There can be strong fluctuations from one year to the other. And particularly with Apis dorsata, because the nesting sites are depending on the food availability, uh, there can be dramatic changes. Two things that we need to do. One, we need to uh, cut down on agrochemicals, particularly chemical pesticides in our farming. By doing that, we will not only uh, save important ecosystem service providers like bees in our, land, in our agricultural landscape, but in landscape even beyond the agricultural uh, areas. Our own research have really shown the little impact pesticide is creating on the honeybees. Secondly, we need to restore the landscape, restore the habitat for the honeybees. And for that, we need to have a list of important plant species that we should propagate in our landscape. And uh, we need to have such lists going for the entire country. Uh, these are called dependence ratios. The main honey species, which is Apis dorsata, is also called the giant Indian rock bee. And that is found all across our subcontinent and further up to Southeast Asia. And those bees provide actually 60 to 70 percent of, of the honey that is available uh, in our Indian market. And we never talk about it because we really do not understand the effort that goes behind the collection. Uh, it is done by Adivasis. We never get to hear their story. Some of the uh, basic things that we have done is, is we have created records. So we have mapped 
uh, these areas from where honey is collected how much of honey is collected what are the main species of flowers from where honey is collected whether it is collected from rocks whether it is collected from trees so we do a pollen analysis of each batch of honey that comes in it helps us to understand and calibrate the information that we get from the community with the science of this and then that helps us to be able to validate for customers that they are able to understand that each batch of honey is very special because it comes from a certain tree once i started thinking and reading a lot about uh, pollination ecology and pollination biology in general i wanted my thesis site to be either in darjeeling which is my hometown and or sikkim i was born and brought up in this region and i had a lot of information about the region already but also because i saw a lot of research gap from this you know like biodiversity hot spot um in india but when i was doing my research which uh, the field work lasted for four years i only found uh, epicerana coming to visit mandarin orange flowers i was wondering you know like why there's only one species of bee coming to visit mandarin orange we don't have a lot of uh, literature or uh, research in sikkim uh, on bees so i completely relied on oral history for this so i started asking people you know, wh- whether there were epizootata of loria coming to visit mandarin orange flowers earlier older days you know like say 20 years back or 30 years back and then most people said like yes it used to come but now it has stopped search angle is not strong yeah is a lot of empirical uh, knowledge that needs to be put together with a research body that is able to build a certain data set over time uh, that could answer many questions Un- um, understanding of the flora of an area over uh, changes in in a period of 20 years honey quality over a period of time uh understanding uh, and correlating weather patterns uh with the volume of honey that is available whether hun- bees are ne- are preferring certain flowers uh, and the reasons for that so all of this put together as research questions we need to understand and this needs sometimes a support a civil society working with a research institution to be able to uh to build this body of knowledge and these gaps constantly we feel it because when you have to interact with the state uh you don't have you don't have immediate data one of the best parts about the scientific endeavor is the focus on working with other people and making connections and collaborations and i think that's not just at your own institution but you know across the country and across the world and that's something that I've really focused on as a bee biologist or as a as a professor working on bee biology because I think you can get a lot of different expertise that you can bring together and a lot of different viewpoints that can be really helpful in making science science move forward you know the current uh, situation with covid-19 is a, you know just a great example of the potential for collaboration between scientists across the world and i think it's uh, hopefully even emphasizes more how we should all be doing that uh, in our research all the time establishing safe habitats zones which are free from human intervention we are working with the aga khan trust for culture very closely to create an appropriate environment in fact a retreat for the diverse bee species at sundar nursery the collaborative efforts include sharing knowledge and expanding the bee friendly flora to be planted in additional green spaces at sundar nursery which can ensure sustenance to the bees throughout the year 
often there is a glass wall between the conventional agricultural sort of establishments in the government and the kind of research that we have been trying to uh, promote the kind of information the kind of message that we are going to propagate so this glass wall need to be broken and there are to be uh, more synergy in our efforts researchers the planners the uh, policy makers the civil society the farming community the community leaders they all need to come together to uh, reverse the scenario and uh, move towards a system which is more ecologically sustainable i strongly feel that having women in this field is very important even when we go out in the field to you know like interview people we would want you know equal participation of male and female and especially when it comes to nature or um conservation related any questions uh, especially in the rural parts uh, it's uh, usually the women who go out in the forest to collect you know like fodder or fuel wood or um, ntfps uh even in history like uh, you know like men would go and hunt and it would be the women you know who gather from uh, the forest so they have a lot of information but when we go out and interview them some of them don't come out openly to talk about it but uh if we can you know like encourage their participation maybe we will have more information about wildlife or nature you know which will be very uh, valuable input to this field altogether we are doing be aware workshops open to the general public and is organized by aga khan trust for culture to create awareness about the diverse honey bee populations also apis dorseta apis mellifera apis serana floria and the stingless bees about their life cycle about the amazing contribution to the ecosystem that they do and again why is it necessary to support them in times of crisis we've got this great uh program where we have bees on the roof and they're helping the environment here in New York City um and they're helping uh bring pollination to uh people's minds that most of the work that we do in the lab and with the bees involves undergraduate researchers and that's um you know really exciting in part because you're exposing these these younger students to practices and culture of science uh but also you're exposing them to honeybees uh which you know is not something that everybody would be exposed to and and it's um it's exciting to watch them learn about honeybees learn about uh beekeeping some of them just can't get enough of honeybees and some of them are like well I'll just stay in the lab and you you bring the honeybees to me so that's a it can be a uh, a spectrum of involvement but um many of the students are so excited to get uh, on the roof with the bees uh every every time we go out there and i think that they will remember their experiences researching honeybees you know for the rest of their life and some of them may even become beekeepers